we're all here today because there's a tremendous rush to engage now in zero emission technology and deliver the greenhouse gas emission savings that everybody is craving to maintain the integrity of our society. It's tremendously important that we do this. I've been very fortunate to have been involved in the implementation of energy storage into the marine industry for the last 11 years. And I've seen it grow from really a kernel uh, now into, I would say, a very young but sturdy tree. And that tree is facing some real challenges with the onrush to engage with zero emission. And for me, one of the principal challenges is making sure that we don't go so quickly into the space without the checks and balances that we need to be able to harness this really incredible technology in a way that benefits everybody. So, um, as I said, I've been doing this for quite a long time now. <coughs> I think I can comfortably say I've been involved in almost every first in this industry in terms of electrification, hybridization, plug-in hybridization, helping to develop charging infrastructure, and seen the industry take incredible growth because it delivers so much value and delivers good value in terms of emissions as well. Everything is gravitating towards having energy storage on board. Uh, the last report I was involved with with the Clarkson's team, about 90% of all the new builds and refits of the world today are incorporating energy storage in some which way, shape or form. And the simple truth is that energy storage represents so much value in so many different systems that it touches that it is inescapable as something that is now an absolute necessity in all of the marine applications we have. So, why am I having a heart attack about safety? Well, the lithium batteries that we deal with today of all chemistries in contain an incredible amount of energy density. Now, that's wonderful, but it also means that you have an incredible capacity if there is an accident or a failure to sink a ship, to kill people, to disable vessels, to cause a serious event. And for those of you who are old enough in the room, in 2011, the 787 Boeing was introduced. And in that year, they had six of their aircraft catch fire because of the lithium batteries that were on board. The destruction, uh, well not total destruction, but they call it six incidences, led to basically almost a full stop in the lithium industry worldwide. All the marine applications that were under discussion were paused until there was some resolution to the 787. What I'm concerned with today is that we're all rushing so quickly down this path. And we've already had in the last two years six serious battery fires that we are going to create a negative uh, for the industry and we're going to create hesitation and doubt when what we really need to do is just validate safety, improve the quality of the product and make sure that we take away the fear that people who don't understand this technology right now are making a, a bad decision because they're worried it's going to blow up. So we need to make sure that they don't think it can blow up. So this video is me punching a nail into a battery because this is the amount of energy you are dealing with. That's a single cell, okay? Imagine that on a boat like the Aurora with 15,360 of those cells having a little bit of an event. The, you can't see the top of that flame of, fi of fire, but it went up about eight meters. So that's a serious amount of energy packed into one of these cells. In one of our modules, there's 24 of those. In a system, there's thousands. So the risk is real and we have to manage it properly. Now, we recently engaged with some, uh, some polling to really see what's the status of people's thoughts. Because ships are now becoming much more value to society if you want and people are aware of them in a way that they never were 10 years ago. And what we found is that the vast majority of the population is, is concerned about the safety of what we're doing in energy storage and is concerned about the safety of the ships they do. This polling, which shows the UK as, as having an 80% level of concern, that's pretty much 100% when you're talking about polling. 
but it, what it lets, everyone's excited about batteries, everyone's excited about hybrid and zero emission ships, but they want to know that they're going to be safe. When you're at sea, the risk of failure or concern is augmented because you're in the water. You're not at the side of the road where you can call somebody to pull up and fix you or take you away. So the real risks here are you're dealing with the potential for thermal runaway. Now, when I started designing batteries back in 2010, we couldn't contain a fire within a battery. So if I had, tw if I had a cell fail, all 24 cells would fail. And we had to design the battery so that it wouldn't propagate via armored racking and things like that. The improvement in technology today is, is quite uh, imp impressive. And the, and the type approval uh, standards associated with it now say that you can't propagate beyond a cell. So one cell can catch fire, technically speaking, but it can't affect the cells adjacent to it. So that's a better, much better level of safety than what we achieved even 10 years ago. The challenge is that you saw that explosion. There's a tremendous amount of energy in a cell. How confident are we that that cell isn't going to propagate even if you pass a test? So my challenge to all the battery manufacturers for the last couple of years has been, let's prevent that single cell from even being able to fail. And to me, that's what we have to do. So in our case, I do this with liquid cooling. There's a lot of debate in the industry about liquid cooling or air cooling, and I'm not here to try and tell you what you should or shouldn't do. We just looked at liquid cooling as a way to absolutely mitigate the risk of a cell being able to catch fire and created a cooling system, if you want, that literally suppresses the temperature of the cell so that it can't go into thermal runaway. It cannot catch fire. Even if you have a nail penetration test, we can prevent that from occurring. So what you're seeing now is a cell going into complete thermal runaway. Its temperature is about 850 degrees at the peak of the event, Celsius. And yet you're not seeing the same bucket of flame that came out when we did the nail penetration test of the single cell. And the reason is that the cooling is literally creating so much resistance to that flame from occurring that it doesn't. So what you're subjecting the battery to is, call, I call it carbon scoring. There's, there's going to be smoke damage on the on top of the battery when it's finished. And we've done this test now literally dozens and dozens of times. What I'd like to see happen and what I think the customers really need to be able to, the ones who are driving the type approval standards and the flag authorities for this to occur, is set this as a benchmark. Make it so that we don't have fires on board batteries on boats. Uh, when we present this to people, one of the most common comments I get is, well, isn't that how everything should be? And it absolutely is. And the technology is here today. I can do it. If I can do it, lots of people can do it. So let's go back before this becomes something where there's another two or 300 ships in case we can't afford six more fires, we can't afford one more fire. And let's define that standard now that we have enough. There's over 40 companies that are type approved in energy storage. That's a pretty broad range of people in the space right now for a good competitive matrix for supply. But now let's make that bar a little bit harder for everyone to stay there so that you as operators, owners, financiers are not putting yourselves, your clients, and your assets at risk.